So if that's the case, and, and I know you're right, but what's going to happen? You know, I've, I'm, you, we've got a huge issue in, in, in privacy. We've got a huge issue in um, uh, commitment. What happens to the person that says, you know something? Holly, I want to go see these houses. And, you know, I don't want to sign an agreement. I have no problem working with you. If we find something, I want you to be paid. But why do I need to sign an agreement before, you know, it's kind of like I look at it, you know, we're getting married before we even dated. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously that is a challenge. And I, I think a lot of people are just going to have to wrap their heads around it. I can't speak for other agents. I know I personally will be enforcing the agreements. There are strong penalties if we don't. And I do want to follow the rules. But I think for buyers, there are certainly different ways you can mitigate it. The agreements are non-exclusive and exclusive. So you do have options. You can also okay, back respond. back up there. Back up there. Yeah. Explain what explain that what that means. So if I if I sign an agreement with you, I can sign this to say, you know, I'm 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 working with Holly, but you know, I might be working with ten other people also. Well, in theory, you can, but you have to be very specific about the properties that you're going to be working on with each agent. So you can limit it to different counties, to different cities, even to property specific that you're going to tour with that particular agent. And then that agent would be representing you on that property. 